Hello, 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 everyone. Super excited to be here. I am effectively live in a lot of different places. So I'm really, really, really thrilled about the conversations we're going to be talking about today. Specifically, how do you grow your speaking business? How do you grow your speaking business? And specifically, um, what is the number one thing that you have to stop doing if you want to grow your business? And this really is going to be relevant for speakers, for entrepreneurs, for thought leaders, for everyone else who is really interested in growing their business. So it's not just going to be for one audience or one person. So I would, I would encourage you to listen in if for whatever reason you felt stuck in the past, felt like you you had some strategy and you didn't quite figure, you couldn't quite figure out why, even with all the strategy in the world, you're not able to grow your business. If anyone's ever been there, just say yes in the comments. Um, send me a yes in the back channel if you're listening in on Clubhouse. Let me know if you've ever been there because I know for a fact I have for sure been there and I'm going to tell you guys why that is. And for a lot of people, and this is how I used to be too. I used to be like this too. So I won't even say a lot of people. I'll say I used to be like this. What I used to do is when people would talk about strategy, I'd be all in. I'm like, okay, great. That's exactly what I need. I just need to know the strategy. If I had the strategy, I would be able to make a million dollars in a day. Like all I need is a strategy. Or I would say, oh, I need the connections. If I just had the connections that that person had, then I'll be able to grow my business really, really quickly. I'll be able to make all the money in the world. So I thought it was connections or strategy. Th that's what I thought. I was like, okay, it's either connections or strategy. And so I felt like at one point in time, and let me know if you've ever been here, I felt like, well, I'm not growing because I don't have the connections or the strategy. Like, I don't, I don't know exactly what to do. If I just get that, that'll be what will take me to the next level. That'll be what will help me to grow in business and in life. It's just, you know, strategies and connections. Come to find out that it was not, to some degree, you do need, you know, you need the right strategies. To some degree, having the right connections will help. But for most of us, for most of us, those of us that are watching this right now, even if you had all the strategy in the world, without giving up this one thing or recognizing that this one thing can hold you back, you're not going to get to the next level. So let's talk about what that means. Let's talk about what that means. All right. And we're just, and then for those of you who are on here, feel free to let me know. Share this out. Talk back to me. Let me know that you're hearing me okay, that you're seeing me okay. All right, excellent. So here's what we're going to do. Let's get into it. The number one thing that was holding me back at one point in my life, at one point in my career, the number one thing that was holding me back from achieving what I wanted to achieve was my desire to be accepted. Now, listen to this, and I'm going to get even more specific with it. It was my unchecked desire to be accept accepted, my unchecked desire to be accepted. And I'm going to say why. I'm going to tell you why I said it like that. Um, because if you are going to be selling anything, that by design means, <laughs> if you're going to be doing anything that is like outside of the ordinary, that by design means that people are going to dislike what you're doing. People are going to criticize what you're doing. And so if you have an unchecked desire to be accepted, it is going to be problematic throughout the course of your business. And it is likely the thing, if you have good strategy, if you have a good coach, if you have a good support system, and you're still not where you want to be, then it is likely going to be your unchecked desire to be accepted that's holding you back. I'll give you a real world example. I remember being in a meeting with a lot of different partners at my old firm. And I had an idea, a strategy for a case. And I, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything at all. I, I couldn't even raise my hand and talk about it. And I'm like, dang, why didn't I say anything? Sure enough, another colleague of mine ends up saying what the thoughts that were in my head. They said it exactly as I wanted to say it. It was the exact same idea, but I didn't share it. And when I look back on why I didn't share it, it wasn't because like, we'll, we'll, we'll mask this with like, oh, I was scared or, oh, there was fear there or, oh, I didn't have um, all the information or, oh, I didn't have everything that I needed. But in reality, the reason I didn't share it is because I had an unchecked desire to be accepted. I wanted, I was afraid of, this is actually what I was afraid of. I was afraid 
And I was afraid that if I would have shared an idea that people thought was dumb or didn't think was smart, I would be judged and thus I wouldn't be accepted. I wouldn't be in the in group. I wouldn't be seen as valuable to the other people that are um, that were a part of our community. And so what you have to ask yourself and what you need to figure out is like, okay, do I have this unchecked desire to be accepted? What am I supposed to do about it? How can I leverage it to actually help me in business versus hurting me in business? And then how am I going to deal with rejection? Because here's the truth. Everybody is going to have re rejection. They just are. Like it's there's no one I know that's going to be able to get rid of rejection. That's going to be able to absolve themselves of rejection. So here's the here's the key to this. Everyone is dealing with the same thing. OK, and so I want you to be looking at everyone in your life, looking at all the different pieces to your puzzle and realize, number one, if you do not check your desire to be accepted, it will rule you for the rest of your life. And it's not even a rational desire. Let's go there for a minute. <laughs> if, if you don't, if you and here's what I mean by check it. All of us watching this, listening to this, whether you're on Clubhouse listening in, whether you're watching this live on LinkedIn and you're a corporate executive, an HR director, whether you're watching it on Instagram and you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, whether you're listening in on YouTube and you're a student, shout out to all the students that watch my YouTube page and you send me your messages. Regardless of the category that you fall in, in life, we all have a desire to be accepted that stems from human nature. Now, I was reading psychology today this morning, and there was an article about, I love psychology today. It was an article about where this desire to be accepted comes from. And it talked about how when we, when humans earlier in life, right, when humans were all roaming the earth and we needed each other, we actually physically needed each other to stay alive. We needed each other for warmth. We didn't have enough fur. Children couldn't hunt. Um, women weren't able to gather at the same speed. And so we really were a community and we all depended on each other for survival. What scientists believe is that that same desire, that desire to thrive, to be alive, to be accepted, to uh, avoid rejection, it was that same desire. It's that same desire that keeps us from being bold and fearless in life because we still want to be accepted. You know what else was interesting about the article? They talked about how when you are rejected, when you are rejected in life, um, you almost feel like physical pain. They also said that people who deal with rejection consistently have physical manifestations of that rejection. So what does this mean for your business? Because now you're like, okay, Ash, I get the science. This is interesting. What do I do about it? What do I do about my desire to be accepted? And how is that affecting my speaking business? How is that affecting my entrepreneurial endeavors? How is that affecting me climbing the corporate ladder? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Here's how it's affecting you. If you live your entire life running from rejection, you'll never make the bold move. Let me repeat it. If you live your entire life running from rejection, you'll never make the bold move. But here's the key. We all, regardless of whether we understand, and I, and I want you to understand the science of it, because when you understand the science of it, when you can when you can accept the, the principle that we all want to be accepted, we all want to avoid rejection, then when we go for big opportunities and we get the no and it hurts our feelings and it stops us from going for another pitch, we can say, oh, no, 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 no. That's my desire to be accepted, but it's okay. I'm safe. I can take risks. And look, I was rejected and logically nothing happened to me. And so then we can make bigger decisions and bigger moves. Now, this is how it affects your speaking business, specifically for all my speakers out there, those who want to get paid to speak, those who want to pitch themselves for bigger opportunities, bigger stages and bigger panels. The easiest thing for you to do, the easiest thing for you to do as a speaker, okay? Don't be mad at me when I say this, y'all. The easiest thing for you to do as a speaker, the, the most... Um, the, the path of least resistance is for you to go on, for you to Google right now, conferences, call for speakers and apply to speak. That's the easiest thing for you to do right now. Um, yeah, 
That's the easiest thing for you to do right now. And when I first started teaching people how to land large corporate speaking contracts or even large collegiate contracts, because I've landed, you know, $20,000 plus contracts from colleges. So it doesn't college corporate. It, it, it doesn't really matter when when you are applying to speak. It, it is an easier path. It's like very simple. You know exactly what you're supposed to do. I'm going to do a call for speakers. I'm going to Google this. I'm going to apply to speak. If you are applying to speak, if you're applying to speak with every other speaker <laughs> that's applying to speak and you get accepted to speak, they are more than likely not going to pay you your full rate, if any rate at all. They may do your travel. In my experience, applying to speak is not the path to landing six-figure contracts. Personally, that has not been my path to landing six-figure contracts. But the reason a lot of the speakers that I work with have applied to speak in the past or like applying to speak is because it is a very simple strategy. You find an application, you apply for the conference, they invite you to speak. But here's the issue. Whenever you, as a thought leader, as a, let me just speak to my trailblazers, my thought leaders, people who have intellectual property that they give out to their clients, people who don't just regurgitate information that they've heard from other people, but people who have experience in what they're doing, they sign the contracts. Like I've been in the negotiations, I've closed the deal. So let me talk to those folks right now real quick. Cause you know, we a little different. If that is you, if you're that person, if you're an innovator, you don't want to lump yourself with every other person in your industry. And what applying to do allows the organizer to do is commoditize speakers. Nothing wrong with it. It's a strategy for them too, boo. Like, I get it. But whenever I say, hey, all speakers come over here and there's thousands of you in one place, all applying to speak. Yes, Audrey, that's definitely you. All applying to speak all buying for the conference organizer's opinion, then the conference organizer can look at you like you are bread in a bread aisle and compare on what? Price, because no matter how great you are, when there are a thousand people all doing the same thing in the same space in the same way, price is going to be the differentiator. So for me, as for me in my house at Speak Your Way to Cash, <laughs> Applying to speak is not a strategy that I recommend when your goal is large corporate or collegiate contracts. Now, because I know y'all upset, because some of y'all have already applied to speak all through the fall, you're like, but they just accepted me into the Women's Conference of the Year. Okay, baby, let me help you. If you're applying to speak and you've applied, you've already gone that way, yo, your fall calendar is filled, right? <laughs> if that is you, here's what you need to do. You need to look at that as a marketing expense. You need to get up on that stage and you need to sell your butt off, okay? Because that is the way you're going to make your money at that point. And so you need to be deliberate about how you're going to move that audience to make a buying decision. You need to think about how many, if there's 50 people there. And the only way, let me tell you guys this. The only way you should be applying to speak and using speaking as a marketing um, tool in your business is if you're comfortable and confident selling. Otherwise, what are we doing here, folks? <laughs> so that is the only way you should be utilizing speaking as a marketing strategy is if you have a system and a process for moving people from people looking at you in the audience to buying something from you. How do I know this? Oh, because I used to do that, right? So when I first started speaking, companies would bring me out to speak. They would say, hey, we have, or college, law schools, specifically law schools. They would say, hey, we have 5,000 students at this conference. You can sell your book in the back of the room and you can sell a workshop in the back of the room. And I would have to do the math. My husband would come with me to these events and we would say, OK, you got 5000 people here. I can move 50 percent of them into buying my book. So I'll make my money on the back end. And how did I know I could move 50 percent? Because I had done so many sessions in the past previously where all I did was sell books. And what my husband would do is he would watch. Now I'm giving you all the game. I that's it. I'm going to just give you the game. Here's what, here, here's what my husband would do. My husband would sit in the audience and he would watch the audience's response to me when I said certain things about my book. He then would track how many books we'd sell when I would point at the book during my presentation versus how many books we'd sell when I would just mention the book. He'd also track 
what people would do when I use certain examples and how many books we sold in each session. Then he tracked how many people were in the audience versus how many sales we made within 10 minutes of me presenting. Then he tracked how many people were in line so that for the next session, we have enough volunteers to sell to them. So look, I get it. If you want to use selling as your strategy and you just want to get, you want to apply to speech because you're like, baby, I got my system together. If I get a hundred people in the room, I know I'm making 50,000 in the back of the room. If that's your life, if that's the life you want to lead, that's fine. But note, there is a strategy to everything. And, and here's the other thing I want us to realize. There is no simple strategy for this stuff. There is not a strategy that is going to be so like easy to implement. <laughs> Quinn said, your husband is a gym. Yeah, my husband is bae, okay? He's been down for a while. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what I would say is like, even if you wanna use it to market your business, then okay, but know what you're up against. Know what you're up against and you have to be exceptional at what you do. Now, there are some of you out there that follow me and I know this because I know my peoples who are like, look, I ain't about to do that. I have expertise. I have IP that I can leverage. I've already done the grunt work of developing a system that can help people. I want to get paid on the front end. Well, then you're my peoples because that's how we do it now. Now, every now and then, if I just want to go speak and make a little money and meet like uh, Audrey is speaking at a conference in September, me and Chris were like, man, we should just go. Like We should just fly out there. All right, cool. We may do that. And it's not about it's not about, you know, getting paid to speak or a strategy or any of that. We may just fly out there just to support, you know, just to support Audrey or just to have a good time. And in that instance, if I pick up an engagement while I'm out there because I want the trip funded, then that's fine. But that's not the strategy to grow your business. Let me tell you the strategy to grow your business and what that involves. That involves you checking your desire to be accepted. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you... The desire to be accepted, there's nothing wrong with it. I have a desire to be accepted. Everyone has a desire to be accepted. When I say check your desire to be accepted, I mean you have to realize who do you want to be accepted by and why, and how does it play into your ultimate marketing strategy so that your business doesn't suffer from your natural human desires? Because guess what, guys? From the article that I read this morning, our desires are not always rational. They're not. Our desires aren't rational. Our decisions aren't always rational. But the more you learn about how you as a person thinks, how you as a person makes decisions, you can then make better decisions. You can decide to live a life that is going to be outside the norms. One thing I started to say recently is we operate outside of the ordinary. And we do that because we've taken some time to understand my irrational desires, my rational desires, what I really want, what I what really motivates me and moves me. So you have to take some time to do that because guess what? Here's the other path. The path to landing six-figure contracts involves typically direct selling in my experience. Direct selling or inviting people to speak. I should have my book down here. I'm, I'm slipping on that. But we actually have a chart that goes through the six ways that you can sell the six ways that you can sell. And there's a variety of them. But traditionally, I can give all of you right now a strategy in five minutes for a, one path, one path we used to land um, a six-figure contract. Here's, here's what it is. We reached out to HR directors on LinkedIn, invited them to an event that I was hosting explaining my framework. After that event, I followed up via phone with all of those who expressed interest in working with me. And then I did that over and over and over again Followed up, kept them in my sales pipeline, and then I sold them on a, an ultimate package that their company needed. The package had some speaking in it, a little bit of consulting. Most of it was done by me. Some of it was not. My team illustrated it. But that's essentially like that's the strategy. That's like what we have done in the past to land large contracts. Now, there's nuances. Y'all know me, right? There's nuances to that strategy. I mean, what did I ask on the landing page? What questions did I say in the sales call? What was my conversion conversation script? Um, what did I say when they gave me objections? How did I ensure they did? Like there is new, there are nuances to it. But with just that strategy, somebody hungry could go and start doing that today. Find HR directors, invite them to an event, explain your proprietary framework. Uh-oh, do you have a framework? 
<laughs> Cause you're gonna need to explain the framework, right? Like you're gonna need to have a framework. You're gonna need to have some IP. And so if you're like, okay, strategy is cool. I wanna, I wanna know, but I wanna see behind the veil. I want to know more details. I want to develop a framework. I need to know how to position it. Then you, my friend, should be at Speak Your Way to Cash Live 2021, where I break all of this down over three days. Um, but but the thing about a strategy is sometimes you think you need to know more information and 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 it does help. But there are other times where like if you're in a group coaching program with me, you already have the strategy. If you take in my course, you already have a strategy. If you're not implementing it, it has nothing to do with the strategy. It has everything to do with your desire to be accepted. Well, how does that show up when you're selling? It shows up because you don't want to sell to them because you're worried they'll get mad. Now, here's what's irrational about that. You don't know these people. I mean, for the most part, when I'm reaching out to someone to ask them or to give them an opportunity to work with me, I don't personally know them. And so because I don't personally know them, it's a little bit irrational for me to be hinging the success of my business's future on the feelings of someone that I don't know. Now, when I pitch, I'm respectful. I'm not insulting them, saying they don't have, you know, saying this don't have saying they don't have, um, you know, they don't have what they need and they're not, they're not smart and they're not doing this and they're not doing that. Like I'm not, you're not insulting people when you're selling to them, but you hinging the success of your future, you hinging the success of your business on the feelings of other people is not quite rational, but it is human. And we all have it. And the difference between this, I have the same feelings as you. So the difference between me having that feeling and you having that feeling is I check my desire to be accepted. I talk to myself, okay? Like I'll say, dang, Ashley, why aren't you doing that? Oh, cause you, cause you want her to like you. That's why you're doing it. Cause you're afraid of, you're afraid of making them mad. You're afraid of being accepted. And for me, it's critical that I check that desire to be accepted because I am someone who goes out and negotiates on behalf of others. So I gotta have my confidence in check. I have to have my, um, and Quinn, I'm gonna get to your question right after this. I have to have my, um, I have to have my 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 desire to be acceptance checked because I'm going into negotiating rooms and I'm shaking board tables on behalf of others. And so I cannot put my fear on them. Now, let me give you this tip before I answer this question. If you're a coach, if you're a consultant, if you're a leader and you struggle with fear, you struggle with the desire to be accepted, you struggle with ruffling feathers, you struggle with making people upset, it is harming your clients because you're likely teaching from a place of fear. You're likely teaching from a place of rejection. You're likely leading from a place of being wounded. So you have to check that. I consider it a disservice not to check my desire to be accepted because there are other people that are looking to me as their coach, their leader, their strategist, their consultant. So I have to be okay with ruffling some feathers. I don't go out of my way to make people mad and I can deliver it in a way that they can understand what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, some of us have to be more conscious of these things, of these unconscious things running in the background, det determining, our, um, determining our next moves and others because of our position of leadership. So be very, very, very careful about that. So we got a question. Will this work for me if my focus is on being an MC? I want companies to hire me as their MC and residents. This will be perfect for companies that host multiple events a year who need a host or an MC. Okay, awesome. Quinn, that's such a good question. And yes, it would work for you um, because all you're doing is packaging and positioning. And so for you, one, you just identify all the companies that need an MC in residence and what that means. Because I don't think companies, companies don't, they wouldn't describe it like that. So however they describe it, that's the language you need to use. And then you would go through the process of pitching the idea to them, probably via video. <laughs> because you want them to know that you understand what they're going through. And in that video, you would say, hey, I see that you all host 15 events a year. My name is, you know, say your name. This is what I do. I'd love to be your MC in residence. Now, you may be wondering, what is an MC in residence? Let me explain over the next 30 seconds. And then you go through your spiel. You give them a pitch and a link to book a call with you. So the strategy may look a little bit different. Like maybe you don't invite them to an event. You may invite them to a 10-minute um, showcase where you're just showcasing your ability to MC, or you send them video clips of you doing it. There's there's all different types of ways you can do this. And something else, guys, because Quinn brought up a really good question about a creative way she wants to get paid to speak by companies. There is no limit to how 
you can package your services to sell them. There's no limit to that. What your, your parameters, the world you have to live within is, is how, do, how do your consumers describe the issue that you solve? Use their language. Even if their language isn't slight right. Like some people are like, well, I'm not a DEI consultant. I'm actually, um, I'm actually an anti-racism expert. Okay, but you may use DEI because that's the language that your clients will use because they don't understand the differences. Like, let's just be, you have to use, your clients have to find you. Your language is the way they're going to find you. For most business owners that I've worked with, the reason they've been underpaid is because they use language that isn't appropriate for the, the level of payment that they're seeking. So they'll say, hey, I want to sell you the replay to my speech. Well, I mean, that sounds cheap. So instead, I want to give you a 30-day license to view this presentation nationwide. Well, that sounds expensive. You see what I'm saying? Like, hey, I want to come in and I'll give you a speech and then I'll give you a PDF with it. Well, that sounds cheap. Instead, I would like to come in and give you a speech and for X amount, We'll provide digital companion guides to every attendee of the presentation. Well, that sounds more expensive. One of the things we're going to do at Speaker Ready Cash Live is give you guys during our language lab, that's that's what we're doing, a language lab. You see anybody else doing that, you let me know, okay? A language lab that will help you go through these conversion conversations. So the language lab is where we're, I'm actually gonna give you lines that you can use in your speeches that will help you, lines that you can use um, on your sales call that will help you move the client conversation forward without you feeling uncomfortable. Because sometimes you just need to know what to say. If they have a timing objection, we have a line for that. If they have a, we're not ready to start now, we have a line for that that we're gonna give you during the language lab at the event. So it sounds like you all need to be in the building of Speaker Ready Cash Live because it's gonna be an incredible experience. But again, all this goes back to it whenever. And then when you have a sales script, you know what you're going to say. You know all the pieces of the sales script. Sometimes you're like, I'm not going to ask them all that because it's not worth it. They already told me they don't want this. They already told me they don't want that. That internal thought process is your desire to be accepted. So you got to check that. You got to check your desire to be accepted. You have to check that. OK, you have to check that. So you definitely want to make sure that you're checking that. <laughs> you're checking that. That's what we're talking about. Checking your desire to be accepted so that you can sell more successfully in your business. If you don't check it, you will not soar to the highest heights. All right. You will not. You will not. And so it's very, very, very important that you check your desire to be accepted. Here's how else that shows up. You're tired in your business. You're tired and you're looking for um, you're looking for ways to, you know, grow your business, make more money. And someone gives you an invite. They're like, hey, come speak at my conference. You're tired. It's over the weekend. It's out of state. They don't have a budget. But you're like, OK, I'll do it. I know her. She's a friend of mine. We, we like each other's posts on Instagram. <laughs> so you do it. That is also your desire to be accepted. If you're doing a lot of things in your business, but they're not things that will matter in five years, then you have to stop doing so many things. And it's probably that you're doing them because of your desire to be accepted. So check this out. This is the test that we use in my business. You all can write this down. Will this matter in five years? If I say yes to this engagement, how will it impact my business in five years? Is this a client that I could work with for the next five years or is it not? Is it something that I can be a part of and leverage in five years or is it not? Because if you start looking at things from that lens and five years isn't even that long, I'm lit about the language lab, me too. Um, five years isn't even that long. Then you're like, then you, you have a framework by which to make decisions. I'm gonna give you guys two frameworks. One, will this matter in five years? That's the first framework. This conference I'm speaking at, if I don't do this panel, will I care in five years? Will I look back and say, be like, man, I can't believe I said no to that. That would have been a great opportunity. Or will I be like, I don't even remember that thing that I did. We have to start making decisions from a vantage point of permanence. How will this impact me later, not just now? So that's one. The second framework I use in my business, will it glorify God? Will it help my family? Will it advance my career? If I can't say yes to any of those things, it's an automatic no, right? It's an automatic no for me. So that's those are two things that I use in my business. Those are two frameworks that I use in my business to make sure that I'm not out here doing things 
that have no real long-term impact because guess what? Your temporary feelings will trick you. Temporarily, it feels so good to be invited. You're so excited about the opportunity and you're like, dang, I have to do this. This is perfect. I got to do this. I got to move some things around and do all this stuff. They don't have a budget, but I'm going to make it work and I'm going to squeeze it in between Monday and Wednesday and I'm going to go to the doctor. on. No, 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 no. We're not doing that, guys. No, we're not. We're not. Let me say, as for me and my speaking way to cash house people, we're not doing that. Okay. We're not doing that. We are not taking on additional burdens that we're not paid to take on. We are not doing things that will not be fruitful to our business in five years. We're not. We're not because you have limited time on this earth. Unfortunately, we are not immortal, which means every second you invest in activity has to be fruitful, which is why I love video content. I have people who go back like three or four years and watch interviews that I did forever. You know, it's why I like technology and its ability to make me, to allow me to be in multiple places at once so I can leverage content. So you want to be thinking about, okay, if I don't do that, if I say no to this opportunity, what can I do instead? Because every time you say yes to something, you are affirmatively saying no to something else. You're going to that event. Well, you're not going to be able to be over here. Okay. So what does that look like for you? You don't attend Speak Your Ready Cash Live. Okay. Well, what does that what does that mean for your future? Because I can tell you, we're not doing this again <clears throat> over three days like this. We're just not. So this is your chance to come to this event. <laughs> and I don't know what coaching looks like for me in the future because I have some big plans for the future. I have some big clients that we're working with in the future. And we've been blessed to do some things this year that are going to revolutionize the way that Mobile General Counsel operates and Speak Your Ready Cash operates. I'm super excited about it. So I'm giving y'all the game over three days at this event. So if you don't, if you say no, no, I'm not going to come or no, it's too expensive or no, I can't do it or no, 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 no. What what are you saying yes to and what information are you saying no to? Because a lot of people look at events and things like, oh, well, I'm either going to go or I'm not going to go. No, no, no. It's not about you going. It's about you being transformed there. What transformation are you saying no to? What opportunities are you saying no to? What collaborations and connections are you saying no to? Because I can tell you something about the people at the, that are coming to the event. They have all invested time, money, and energy in coming. They're clear about the fact that their lives will not be the same. And it makes for really good networking because everyone in the room paid to be there. So the level of conversation is going to be very different. And we have a lot of opportunities for you all to connect and communicate and network with one another. So what are you saying no to by not saying yes to that? You want to make sure that the because the information you learn at this event will be relevant in five years. It's not fad. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a fad type thing. Like, oh, well, sales is going to change in five years. Sales hasn't really changed in 100 years. The basic principles of sales have not changed. The technological resources that we have that make it easier to sell have changed. And I'm going to tell you something about sales. I got a sales call from some people at um, Grant Cardone's office the other day. They called me, hey, da, 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 talking all fast. Ashley, I saw you did this. Da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, this isn't a good time. Okay, but before you go, let me ask you five, six. Da, 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 da. Okay, first of all, sir. Now, because I teach sales, I kind of let them go on because I was interested in this. I was like, okay, this is a very interesting, abrasive way to sell. Does this work? And then I thought about it. It don't work for me, but it works for someone because they do it over and over again consistently. So obviously it works for someone. Now for me and for a lot of you watching, that type of selling is the reason why you don't sell because you don't want to be that person. You don't like the really aggressive, let me pull you out of what you're doing and fight for your attention and all of that. You like to be in a position of power and authority and you don't want to sell down. You don't want to have to be like, you know, begging people for your attention and praying that they listen. And it's okay, I know you're with your baby, but let me do it. Like, no. And then he kept saying, I totally understand, but he didn't. And how do I know he didn't understand? Because he wasn't listening. If he listened, he would have heard me say it's not a good time. He would have heard my baby in the background crying. And so the way that I teach selling, let me make it very clear, is in a way where you can maintain your position of power. I'm not asking you to cold call a thousand people. I'm asking you to show them why what you do is so valuable such that they book a call with you. And on that call, you remain 
in your position of authority. And even if they say no, with the way that I teach you to sell, you're going to get so much data and information out of it that the time spent is valuable to your future and to your present. I'm not asking you to do it like the, the boys do it. The good old boys club does it because that's not interesting to me and it's not empowering to me. And I don't believe it works for the level at which we're trying to sell packages. Plus, I'm a sister. We do things different. You know what I mean? Just say. <laughs> so I, I just want to clarify that because I got that sales call and I was like, oh my God, is this what people think selling is? For some people, that is what selling is. And for some guys, maybe that works out great. But for me, it's never worked. I'd like to use more of a Jones method of selling, which is where I may call, you know, I may call Tanika and say, hey, Tanika, um, Sarah gave me your number. She said that you may be interested in this. Is now a good time? And she's like, oh, you know what? I did hear about that. That's not a good time. But I do know, Sarah, can you shoot me an email? Yeah, girl, I'll shoot you an email and I'll go ahead and include a free something, something in there. And then we can talk when it's better for you. Does that sound good? Oh, thank you so much. That's how my sales conversations go. And then I follow up. Hey, did you have a chance to look at it? I know you're busy. Here's the link again. And the people who look at what I'm having to, to offer them are so intrigued by it. They're so interested by it. And I'm respectful in the process that they come back. I'm not begging them to do business with me. And if they say, this isn't a good time, I'm not interested. Okay, cool. Well, you can always listen to the podcast if you're interested. Or here's an article if you're interested. Come back around, let us know. I'm not because and why do I why don't I have to like beg Tanika to do this and oh, no, put the baby away. Talk to me now, because there are seven billion people on this planet. And if I can sell to a very, very, very mustard seed, small fraction of them, my future is solidified in a way that I'm proud of. My kids are going to eat. My daughter is not paying for college. So I don't have to do that. And neither do you. But here's the other thing. If you don't sell at all, if you only wait for people to come to you, you're going to have a hard time because there's a lot of content out there. There's a lot of people out there who have excellent things to say in the market. And so the, the, the sweet spot for me is direct selling, content marketing, having conversion conversations every single week, Having sales professionals that are helping me to sell after we solidify our sales process, which we've done, so that now I'm able to sell every day, regardless of whether I'm the one picking up the phone. But in general, I think sales feels icky because of calls like the ones I got yesterday from old boy. Hey, Ashley, blah, 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 blah. whenever you are talking fast, I know it's something up. I'm like, oh, no, this brother talking too fast now. Now, I don't know if you, from the student loan people, I don't know if you trying to like, if it's a scam, like, I don't know what's going on. You're talking too fast now. Mm -mm, I don't like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that is just something to keep in mind. The strategies that we're going to teach you are strategies that will allow you to remain in your power seat throughout the course of the sales process. So that is something I want to make sure that you all know. Um, I don't want you to ever get out of your power seat because that's deflating. I want you to know exactly who you are, but I also want you to understand the things that hold you back from selling. Sometimes it's not strategy, it's your desire to be accepted. So the title of this live, the number one thing you have to stop doing to scale your speaking business, to grow your speaking business is... Check your desire to be accepted. Check your desire to be accepted. It's a sign. It's a human desire. We all have it. I have it. You have it, etc. But without checking that desire to be accepted, without realizing when it's showing up in your life and blocking you from opportunities, you won't be able to move forward, okay? And I want you all to move forward. I want you all to grow and to develop in a way that is really um, powerful, to your brand and to your future. Because when you develop, when you grow, when you're able to make the revenue you need in your business, spend the time you need with your family, it is life-changing. It is life-changing, okay? So without, yes, absolutely. So you said direct selling, content selling, conversion conversations and allowing someone to help. Yep, those are good. Those are good, definitely ways that you can sell. So for sure, like that's what you have to do. So the number one thing you have to do is check your desire to be accepted. After you've checked your desire to be accepted, then when you get strategies and fear comes up, because it will, and it does for me and for everyone else, you can talk to yourself and say, oh, oh, 
Why aren't I following the process? Why aren't I following my sales script? Am I being intuitive or is it my desire to be accepted that's stopping me from making moves? And then three, and then three, the question would be, all right, I've I've, I, I, have a, I have a strategy. I've checked my desire to be accepted. Now I need to figure out, um, am, I, am I doing activities that will move my business forward? Am I accepting invitations to speak for things that will matter in five years? Am I, is what I'm doing today going to help me in five years or hurt me? Am I making decisions from a place of permanence or just because it's cute for right now? The question I want all of you to write down on a sticky note and put on your computer so when you get those invitations to do stuff that don't serve you, you can run it through. Here's the question. Will this matter in five years? If I say yes to this client, if I say yes to this opportunity, if I say yes to this collaboration, will I be proud of it in five years or will I not? Okay? And only then are you able to be like, all right, that's a good decision. That's a good decision. I should do this. I should I should invest in this relationship, et cetera. So I got a question. If I'm not able to make the investment for the event, where could I start with your content slash products? Excellent. So we keep it real simple over here. The event is going to be your best bet. But if you cannot afford the event for whatever reason, and we do have a payment plan, and I would question the whole affordability thing, just because I'll, I'll tell you why I'll question that. I always question the affordability thing because of this one reason. I remember um, this is what I did you know, do what you got to do. But for me, it was like, if I if I made all my decisions based on what I don't have, then I'm always going to make poor decisions. If I make all my decisions based on what I don't have, then I'm always going to make poor decisions. In my life, that sentence has helped me to make the decision for the future, not just for where I'm at right now. So if it's feasible for you, I'm not saying don't pay your mortgage, you know, lose your house, any of that. But the event is... um the virtual ticket is under $1,500 and we have a payment plan option that lets you get started for like a hundred bucks. So I would, I would question the affordability, but besides that, um, you can go to the speaker rate of cash podcast, go to speaker rate cash.com. Listen to the podcast. It's 100% free content. It's literally like mini masterclasses. So that would be where I would start. If you're like, I want to get started. I can't attend the event. Um, and, and I want to, but I want to still learn from you. I would go to the podcast. Now, if you want to attend the event, then you need to get there. Then you need to get there, get in the room. And, and really what you'll say is, and I've had people email me this. They're like, look, I'm coming to the event. I don't know how, but I'm gonna be there. And I'm like, yep, then you'll be there. Whatever you decide, you'll have. And whatever you focus on grows. I made a post about this earlier. So if you're focused on, well, I don't have this and I don't have a coach and I don't have a mentor and I don't have this and I just got divorced and I just did this and I just, whatever you, whatever you are focused on grows, whether it grows in reality or it grows in your mind, it still grows and it can block your next steps. So I would recommend everyone get to the event because we added the payment plan to make it a little bit more accessible. Um, so there is that option, but the podcast is always there. Speak your way to cash podcast. It's a great place to start. The event is going to be incredible because when you attend the event, um, you're going to get resources that you can keep forever. One of them will be the welcome box. Now you have to get your ticket before September, right? In the welcome box, if you get your ticket early enough, will be an advanced copy of the book, a workbook that you can use for life that will help you to like advance your speaking career with sales scripts and templates and swipe copy. All of that is going to be in the workbook. And then you'll also get some beautiful gifts from our sponsors um, and you'll also get a journal from me, this beautiful hardcover speaker ready cash journal. It is gorgeous. A journal from Dubsado. We have a gift from Uncloned Marketing. She, she's giving us hundreds of dollars off her published and paid course, which is the course Publishing Like a Pro course. <laughs> she's giving us hundreds of dollars off her Publishing Like a Pro course, which is the course that I took before I produced the book and my book my box and my journal. So you will want to look up publishing like a pro. I read Jasmine's book published and paid before I published my book as well. And so you have a lot of stuff in that box. And I've actually had people who still use the workbook from like years ago today. So that is something that is going to be helping you for sure. Okay. So I want to make sure that you all get that, but you have to get your ticket in time because we're not going to be able to ship boxes to people who register very late so I would um I would get there. I would get there. I would get there a hundred percent. Make sure that you're at the event, make sure that you're in the building, make sure that you're there because 
if you get your ticket by September, you're going to get the book in time to read the book and then attend the event. And if you have any questions about the content, you get to spend three days with me and I wrote the book. So you literally get to spend three days with the author, go through everything and make sure you're ready. And imagine you spend three days investing in your career, investing in your future, leveling up your business. Those three days could literally change your thought patterns for the rest of your life. And if I can do something that'll change the way you think about your life, the way you think about your business, that level of transformation is far more valuable than any price I could put on the event. So make sure you're in the room for that. Our other sponsors are Dubsado, Smith AI, and Unclone Marketing. All right? Unclone Marketing. Um, that shirt is fire too. Love it. Yeah, this is by uh, 316. It's a dope, dope shirt. It actually says, believe on the sleeves. This stuff is amazing. So, all right, I want to see you guys at the event. I have um, some cool conversations coming up soon on our virtual book tour, which has been amazing. I sat down with Aja the other day. Last week, I sat down with Jasmine Womack. Um, next week, I'm sitting down with Audria on Clubhouse, and we're going to be talking about, I don't know if she'll have us talk about her publishing like a pro course, or if she'll, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about a lot of stuff. It'll be really good. It, it's Her course is phenomenal. So make sure you go and get that course. Make sure you go and get that course. And if you're attending the event, you actually have the ability to get the, um, you have the ability to get the course at a discount because she's a sponsor and she's given us a little something in our boxes, private, to people who are attending the event. So I wanna make sure that you all take advantage of that. Smith AI is also giving you a discount on their services. They're the receptionist service that I use. So that when people call, it's somebody who picks up, it's like, hello, this is Mobile General Council. How can I help you? Like all of that full-time receptionist from nine to five, it is an incredible service. And so they're the company that we use for that. They've been really, really good and helpful. They also have a chat feature. And then Dubsado is also a sponsor. They're the company that we use to send out our proposals. We were really careful to make sure all of our sponsors were actually technology that we use so that I can affirmatively say, these are businesses you should support because I spend money with them. I've spent money with all the sponsors and it's great that they're actually supporting us back. So the event, Speak Your Way to Cash Live, November 4th through the 6th. Um, the 6th is a little bit of a shorter day, but it's like, it's full days, 4th, 5th, half day, 6th. Now, some people are attending and they can only attend two out of the three days. I mean, you're still gonna get your money's worth. And we have pre-event bonuses. So you get your ticket next week. You can attend a free coaching call. We'll include it in your ticket. You can attend a coaching call with me where I'll be going over the most, the highly, the most highly sought after topics in the industry that companies are buying right now, even in the pandemic and how you can take advantage of those things. And I'll answer some questions you have about your speaking business. So that's our expiring bonus for this month. And our expiring bonus for next month is, as I've shown you guys, and you all have seen the update videos, these beautiful boxes. And this isn't even the, the final box, but this is one of our boxes that we're going to have. So we have some expiring bonuses, which just means if you've already gotten your ticket, you get all the expiring bonuses. If you haven't gotten your ticket yet, the sooner you get your ticket, the more you get out of the event, the more um, pre-event bonuses that you get. And then you still get to attend the full three-day event and conference. So make sure you are in the room. You all have, I don't know what date it is, but you all have a couple, I think a week left in August to get your ticket and take advantage of the next expiring bonus. So I want to make sure you all do that. It is November 4th through the 6th, November 4th through the 6th, Speak Your Way to Cash Live 2021. And I will see you guys there. Thank you so much. This is my first time going live on Instagram, on um, all of the platforms I typically go live on, but also being on Clubhouse with my iPad. So shout out to Audrea for that tip because I was trying to figure that out. But yeah, so make sure you're there. We have phenomenal sponsors, all of whom I have personally spent money with, okay? Which means I trust our sponsors with my business. And so they're giving you a way to invest with them in a way that will actually help you grow your business. And, and honestly, every tool that I'm invested in that's sponsoring this event, Dipsado, Smith AI, um, Uncloned Marketing, and they're publishing like a pro course, I have made money using their services. And to be clear, we only invited and allowed sponsors to work with us if I use their products, made money with their resources, and wanted to share them with my audience because I take that very seriously. So this isn't the type of thing where it's like, oh, anyone could sponsor. Every no, <laughs> everyone can't sponsor. So we were very selective in that. So you all 
have some good things coming from them. And it's a, a real honor to me to do this event. So Speak Your Ready Cash Live 2021. Make sure you get your tickets for the event. It's going to be incredible. Go to speakyourreadycash.com slash event. When you get there, click on, um, click on that big button at the top that says secure your seat now. And when you actually do that, and for those of you joining on Facebook, I can actually share my screen. Don't look at all my tabs that I have open, y'all. Let me actually close some of these tabs. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so you go to speakerreadycash.com slash event, and it's November 4th through November 6th. Just click on secure your seat, and it'll actually give you current pricing. Um, the virtual ticket right now is $1,200 if you pay in full. If you do the payment plan, it's $1,500. You can select this register now button with the payment plan, and it'll let you secure your seat for just $100 down. And if you do that, if you do that, I think it's $100 or $200 down, but you can you know, you can add more to it if you want. If you do that, you're locked in to the early bird bonus, even though you're paying for it over time. So, you know, I don't know what your payment schedule is like, but I would go on ahead and do that. And if you want to attend in person for three days, the in-person ticket includes breakfast, a breakfast session each day with full breakfast provided. So three additional bonus sessions. And then we're going to do an evening session, one of the nights of the event, just for VIP folks. So it's four additional sessions if you do the virtual ticket or you do the VIP in-person ticket and that ticket's 2,500 and there's a payment plan option for that as well. So go to the events page. You can secure your ticket. It's very, very, very easy to do. Just click the button that works for you. Get signed up for the event. Right after you register, you're going to get a pre-event questionnaire that I want you to fill out so that we can prepare for you because I actually, I don't want to say stock, but I like look at every person who's attending the event and I make sure that I am prepared to serve those that are going to be in the room that are investing their time with me. And I take it very, very, very seriously, very seriously. OK, so it's unlike other events that you've attended. And for those of you attending virtually who've attended virtual events in the past, let me just say this. This is not going to be like a computer in the corner. So you don't really feel like you're a part of the event. We are flying in volunteers to make sure virtual attendees are handled. We are also um, having a three or four person videography team that's coming out and professionally live streaming this event in high quality um, video for you. So we've spent a ton of money on AV to make sure that everyone virtual has a high quality experience. And we will have volunteers dedicated to our virtual audience to make sure that if you have questions, they're getting answered. We even have, we're having them set up the room so that we can do hot seats with people who are virtual. So you'll come on stage virtually and I'll be able to talk to you and do hot seats and all of that. So it's going to be an experience, whether you attend virtually or you attend in person, it's not going to be something you want to miss. Now, even though you're attending virtually, let me let me tell you what people did last year, because this is our sixth one. Last year, I got emails from people that were like, I'm attending your conference virtually, but I, I'm not attending in person. But I went and booked a hotel for three days away from my family, away from my kids so that I could network and focus. And a lot of people did this, y'all. People rented like co-working spaces. And I recommend it. Because I recommend you treat November 4th through 6th as Speaker Ready Cash Live. I recommend you treat this event as like your time to recharge, invest in your business, and get yourself together for three days. That's what I recommend. You give me three days, and we're going to change your thought and belief patterns forever. It's, it's impossible for it not to change. Even if all you do is come and see all the possibilities. That's going to change your thought pattern. That's going to change your belief pattern. And there are a lot of testimonials running on ads of people that are saying things like, it wasn't until I came to the event that I was able to make that shift to landing a six-figure contract. It wasn't until I came in contact with your coaching services that I was able to land my first five-figure contract after never being paid before to speak or only being paid $20,000 in a year. I made more in a quarter of one contract than I made an entire year speaking. And people have gone from never being paid to getting paid. So wherever you're at, there is another level for you that this event will facilitate. And I want you a part of the process. So get your ticket in August. You'll attend our um, bonus coaching call, which is our expiring bonus for this month. All right. So get your ticket. All right. And for those of you who have already registered, we're sending out an email today about the pre-event prospecting party, the dates for the bonus coaching calls, that you all can add those to your calendar. But yes, go to speakerreadycash.com slash event November 4th through the 6th. This event will change your life. It will change the way you think. It will change the way you sell in a way that is empowering to you. And I want to see you there. All right. So thank you guys so much for joining. If this was good, share it with a friend. I will leave this live up. But thank you so much for your time.